Hey guys, it's Story. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over the Twilight Saga book covers. This has been a crazy requested video. I mentioned doing this in my Midnight Sun cover explanation video, which I will link down below if you haven't seen already. You probably should watch that video before you watch this one because I'm not going to be explaining the Midnight Sun book cover since I obviously dedicated an entire video to it. But basically I said that I was going to dedicate a video where I talk about the rest of the books in the Twilight Saga and what their covers mean and represent. So here we are. <laughs> of course, I have to throw a disclaimer in the beginning of the video before I start, just so you guys know that this is my own opinions, my own theories. You could research this if you want to and come up with your guys' own take on it. But I have a lot of information about Twilight. I don't know if I'm proud of it. Sometimes I'm proud of it. <laughs> Other times I'm like, why do you know all this? Uh, yeah. I have taken things I've known since I first read the Twilight Saga when I was 13, since the movies came out. I went back and researched even more just to be sure that I have enough quotes and examples to prove what I'm saying. But like I said, this is my own opinion. This is my own theory. I should actually go ahead and mention that Stephanie Meyer has said what the Twilight book cover means and represents and also Breaking Dawn. She has not said anything about New Moon and Eclipse because she actually states in an interview about Eclipse, the sales and marketing team at her publisher, Little Brown and Company, came up with the book covers for New Moon and Eclipse. So she didn't have as much say in those book covers. Anytime I'm quoting Stephanie Meyer, you will see on the screen here that it says Stephanie Meyer and I will use her quotes a lot. I like to prove myself by saying what she has said. But anyways, let's just go ahead and get into it. So first off, you should know that any cover will reflect the main character of the book. So in the Twilight Saga, we are going from Bella's perspective. Bella is the main character, so the covers represent Bella. In Midnight Sun, the cover represents Edward. And for the novella, the short second life of Brie Tanner it represents Brie Tanner because she is the main character of the novella and if you don't know what the overall theme is for the Twilight covers it is basically choice so all of these books overall represent choice but each book cover represents the choices that the main character is having to make specifically to that book again the link to the Midnight Sun video is going to be down below I encourage you to watch that video first so you know what the explanation of the Midnight Sun cover is but basically it goes back to the Greek myth of Hades and Persephone. So that is why you see a pomegranate, but basically it deals with morals versus sins, good guy versus bad guy, before Edward was a vampire versus after, a whole lot of internal conflict. But if you wanna get a better explanation to that cover, then watch that video first. All right, so first up is my baby, it is Twilight. <laughs> so Stephanie says on her website, stephaniemeyer.com, that the apple on the cover of Twilight represents forbidden fruit. I use the scripture from Genesis located just after the table of contents because I love the phrase, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Isn't this exactly what Bella ends up with? A working knowledge of what good is and what evil is. The nice thing about the apple is that it has so many symbolic roots. You've got the apple in Snow White, one bite and you're frozen forever in a state of not quite death. Then you have Paris and the golden apple in Greek mythology. Look how much trouble that started. Apples are quite the versatile fruit. In the end, I love the beautiful simplicity of the picture. To me, it says choice. And that's exactly what it is. This represents choice for Bella. I think Adam and Eve is a really good representation of this cover as well. I know that Stephanie didn't say anything about Adam and Eve, but it's basically the same thing where you are offered something and you have a choice. And basically that choice is good versus evil. The pomegranate on Midnight Sun is also a forbidden fruit. So this works really well. A lot of people think that the story of Hades and Persephone actually started the groundwork of Christianity. So I think they, reflect really well within each other but yeah I think this is actually the easiest cover to figure out yourself immediately when you see a red apple and it is presented to you in this way you're gonna think Adam and Eve you're gonna think forbidden fruit you're gonna think about sins and morals and good and evil and I think it's just basically straight to the point right it's my personal favorite I think it's just so iconic right and I just love 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 that the Midnight Sun cover reflects this one so well because because it's kind of like Edward's version of Twilight. Hers is very like wholesome, if you know what I mean. Bella's version of Twilight is, you know, Edward is this amazing god, which 
he is okay she's just so obsessed with him and in love with him and it's really good for her it's a good thing but he thinks that he's going to damn her soul and he needs to protect her and yada 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 so his version is that it's not the best thing it's actually a really bad thing all right and now new moon is next and it is the second book in the Twilight Saga. Sorry if I'm blinding you guys. Stephanie says that the flower on the cover is a ruffled tulip. As for the meaning, you know that the apple cover had a lot of meaning for me and I was an active part of the covering process. However, that experience is more the exception than the rule in the publishing world. Something to keep in mind if you intend to embark on a career as a writer, lots of things you might expect to be under your control or not. Covers, for example. Those are mostly up to the publisher and the marketing and sales departments. So I don't know what the tulip means. I didn't have anything to do with this one. So for for me, I know that New Moon is the darkest time of Bella's life. She's very depressed, she's very fragile, she's basically numb to all her surroundings because she is so depressed. And I just think this cover really represents that well. It's very, you know, delicate and fragile. And also, if you pay attention, the flower is losing a petal. This is where she loses Edward. Some people think the petal that's being lost represents tears. I don't know if that's true, but I do think it represents losing Edward. Also, whenever she gets the paper cut at the house, which then makes Edward and his family leave, it was one drop of blood that spilled on the floor. So this one petal that is falling can represent that one drop of blood. And essentially, once Edward leaves, she has lost a part of herself so I like it I don't know if it fully represents the book in the series as well as some of the other covers but I do think you know it does represent how delicate and fragile she is it is the darkest time of her life and the petal that did fall off does represent like two or three different things so I like it it's okay I still like Twilight better though <laughs> next is the third book in the series and that is Eclipse so I have not found anywhere Stephanie saying anything about the Eclipse cover but at this point she had already said that she was not in the covering process for New Moon, so we can all assume that she was not in the covering process for Eclipse either. But she did answer this question, and she has it on her website. In both Twilight and New Moon, Bella commits to becoming a vampire without once really examining what price she'll pay. In Eclipse, Bella fully comprehends that price, and then she chooses to pay it. Every aspect of the novel revolves around this point. Every backstory, every relationship, every moment of action. So what this is saying is that Bella immediately decides that she wants to become a vampire one day because it just makes sense. She doesn't want to grow old and Edward stay the same. She wants to live with him forever so it just makes sense but she doesn't thoroughly know what she's getting herself into until really Eclipse. Everything that happens in Eclipse is surrounded by that like Stephanie said and it then helps her decide that she really is making the right decision. She knows that she will have to pay for this in very many different ways but basically the entirety of this book she is introduced to all of that and then she still decides it. I feel like I just made that more complicated than it had to be. So we have a long red silk ribbon. A lot of people think this represents towards the end of the book whenever they go to Italy and at the festival everyone is in red which then symbolizes the Volturi. Personally I think Twilight and New Moon already had those red themes to them so they just stuck with the same red theme and then you'll see obviously with Breaking Dawn that they kept that red theme. It could represent that if you wanted to but it doesn't really reflect Bella, our main character. If you remember what I said in the beginning of this video but one thing about this cover is that you can see this ribbon has been cut or shredded and it's not fully broken yet. There's a sliver of thread still there, two threads still there, but it has been severed in some way. It's just not completely severed. Am I using that word right? Severed? I don't even know. I think this reflects Bella's difficulty severing ties with the human world. So for example, family. She cannot have children again. She also can't see Charlie anymore or Renee or any of her family. She has to give up family. Family she's already had, family she could possibly have in the future. She has to give up Jacob. So Jacob will not fuck with her after this. So she has to completely lose her best friend. And obviously if she's deciding Edward, then she's not deciding Jacob, which that whole thing is just and also sex, so at least at this point in time, she thinks that she won't have sex until after she's a vampire, and also she can't reproduce, like I just mentioned. So she finally realizes the difficulty of this choice, everything that comes with it, and she still decides the same thing. So you can kind of see this cover going either way. It could represent how she is still deciding, even though everything she is losing is a lot, like she's still holding on, or you can see it the opposite way that I just mentioned. Either way, she's having difficulties 
okay. If you know anything about the Twilight Saga, it is that Bella's destiny is to become a vampire. So I feel like this is pretty correct. And I'm very proud of myself because Stephanie Meyer has not said anything about this cover. So that's what I think it is. Again, New Moon and Eclipse have to be theories since Stephanie has never said anything about them. I get my research from anything Stephanie has said in general, stephaniemeyer.com or anything she has published. So a lot of the stuff I am telling you today in this video is from the illustrated guide. So if you haven't read that, to be honest, I haven't even read it yet. I do not own it, but I read portions of it online. So anyways, she's almost ready, but she just can't let go yet. And now it is time for her to fully let go so that she can transition to that next step. All right, and the big boy, Breaking Dawn. <laughs> My most favorite brick of them all because I just don't read big books anymore, probably because of this book. I'm reading it right now actually, and I am halfway through, that's why. There's only tabs on the first half of the book, and um, wow, I've just not been doing very good reading in general, like obviously nothing against the book. I'm just not in a good headspace to read, so it's taken me quite a while, but I'm finally to the good part. Bella has just turned into a vampire. So I have a feeling I'm going to speed through this now. Stephanie says on her website, Breaking Dawn's cover is a metaphor for Bella's progression throughout the entire saga. She began as the weakest, at least physically, when compared to vampires and werewolves, player on the board, the pawn. She ended as the strongest, the queen. In the end, it's Bella that brings about the win for the Cullens. So that pretty much sums it up. I think it's pretty obvious as well. So I kind of like how Stephanie will tell us the covers for the obvious ones, but not for the ones that aren't obvious. Yes. Why? Bella is the fragile human in the situation. She wants to protect everyone, but like we all know she can't. And I've discovered that this is a trope now, at least in vampire movies and shows and books overall. The human in the center of the story is so protective over everyone, but it's like, you're a human. What are you gonna do? So she's obviously this red pawn back here that can easily be taken off the board. She's full of blood because people want to eat her. She becomes what she was always meant to be, her destiny a vampire. I really like this because it shows that Bella was always meant to be a vampire and this story isn't just like an epic love story between her and Edward, but that it is her story as a character, as a person of what she was always meant to be. I also really like that she mentions that Bella is the reason why they win against the Volturi or they stand against the Volturi because I guess they never really actually fight them. But yeah, without Bella, they would have never beat them. All the Cullens could have died, but then again, the only reason the Volturi were there was because of Renesme, which happened because of Bella. And in the short second life of Brie Tanner is pretty self-explanatory. There's an hourglass and the sand is red. Obviously there's a red theme here. It deals with vampires. She's a vampire now. And you see that the sand is in two different, what would you even call that? Spaces in the glass? I don't know. <laughs> because it is her second life and it is an hourglass because it is a short second life. She dies like that. And then since life and death is just a reimagining of Twilight, everything is opposite since all the genders are opposite. So you have a green apple instead of a red apple and then the gender of the hand is opposite. So you'll see that in Twilight, it is a woman's hands. I used to think that this was a woman's hand and this was a man's hand, but it's actually the same person. And then this is a man's hand. I've had someone comment on a video before saying it was the opposite, but like it does kind of make sense because you would think Edward would be holding the apple to like give to Bella to have her choice. But I guess since the covers do represent Bella, it should be a woman. And then the cover on life and death obviously represents a man. If I haven't showed what Midnight Sun looks like, I'm sure you've seen the cover floating around the internet, but this is what Midnight Sun looks like with the pomegranate and all its glory and all its polarizing drama. And then for the official illustrated guide, this is a puzzle piece that is not in place yet, but it's about to be in place. You can see it's the right puzzle piece. And it is a red puzzle piece, of course, to keep it in the black, white, and red theme. But this symbolizes the coming together of all four books, all of the books in general now in the series. It shows that the series is Finish, finito, danzo, it's done, okay? <laughs> and that is all the book covers explained. If you want to know where the book covers are in the movies, there are specific scenes that represent the book cover of that movie. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna explain all of those real quick, but if you don't care, then deuces. So in Twilight, you can see this cover being represented whenever Edward and Bella are at the salad bar. Edward makes the apple go off of his foot and he catches it just like this. And it says edible art. 
Bella. For New Moon, this is one that a lot of people don't know, and I'm very surprised because I feel like I noticed it pretty early on. But you can see this cover being represented towards the beginning whenever Bella hurts herself at the Cullen house. Carlisle is fixing her up with bandages, and he throws the bandages in a water bowl, and he lights it on fire. It might be a little more difficult to see than the other book covers, but it represents this. So you'll see the white and the red, and it kind of looks like delicate petals the way it's like on fire. And then for Eclipse, this one is pretty hard to miss, but whenever Bella cuts her arm in order to distract Victoria, I think it was, from killing Edward, the single blood drop runs down the entirety of her arm. So it is a very long bloodline. Is that what you would call it? I don't know, but it's pretty hard to miss because it just represents the red ribbon. And then for Breaking Dawn, one of the activities that Edward and Bella does while they are on their honeymoon on Isle Esme is they play chess. So there's a scene where they are playing chess, but it's really quick. And I believe the chess pieces, I can't remember if they're black and white or red and white. I just watched it a couple days ago as well because I just finished the first part. For some reason, I want to say they were white and red just to satisfy my OCD, but they might be black and red. You're going to see it on the screen anyways, but she also has a dream. And in that dream, it's kind of the same scene where they're playing chess, but then they end up not even playing chess. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Okay, that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these Twilight themed videos, please give them a thumbs up so I know to make more of them. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already, if you feel like it, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.